This broadcast will start in 30 seconds. This broadcast will start in 15 seconds. This broadcast will start in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The Voice of Stockton. For more information on The Voice of Stockton, go to thevoiceofstockton.org. The views and opinions expressed in the following program do not necessarily reflect those of KXVS The Voice of Stockton or its parents, affiliates, management, and staff. My guest today is Rich Eaton with Pro AV Audio Theater, uh, Audio theater. Visual Home Theater. Yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't know that. Uh, good morning, Rich. How you doing? Good. Thank good, you good for, beer. for coming in. So, uh, tell me a little bit about your business. Well, we run a uh, home theater business. Been running out of Stockton for about 23 years. Uh, got into this. Started with you know sound, and then. Got into the home theater, and here we are. Here now we are. Now we're in home <laughs> automation. <laughs> yeah, we'll touch on home automation because uh, I remember years ago when I worked for you, it was it was a lot different than it is now. Things were just, you know, ideas back then, and now you could actually automate your whole home. Yeah. So uh, before we get started, tell us a little bit about your company. How did you get into home theater? Well, it started out, uh, you know, obviously in stereo. And then, then you have, you know, TV came into play. Stereo? And, uh, Cassette? Yeah, so we started out with you know, <laughs> all stereo back then. And then it was car stereo. You know, being young, you got to get into car stereo. That's right. The car two stereo. 12s or four 12s or 10 12s. Yeah, we had 16 10s in the back of our Trans Am. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, that was 1985. So we had a business, Valley High Car Stereo in Sacramento. And uh, going really good. Things were going well. And... Uh, decided that uh, I think uh, oh, home would be my, my forte. Your that, home uh, would be your home. Yeah, the cars were, were getting old. I was getting older and was looking for a different set of uh, clientele. And so I thought, well, all right, we'll get into home. So then we started with Jack Can Audio Video here in Stockton. And oh, very that's well a Stockton uh, place. Yeah. icon back in the day. That was the place. Yeah, everybody went there to get their stuff. And so I worked there from 87 to 1990 and had a great time and during that time is when surround sound started uh, so it was about 1988 so uh, what is with, surround, what, what was surround sound like back then uh pretty Two bad stereos, <laughs> pretty bad pretty much you, you had a stereo and then you bought this this little black box that had an amplifier and you'd put these little speakers behind you and they would turn on and off on certain scenes and it was kind of ooh that's surround sound <laughs> but then Dolby Pro Logic came out and then that that said oh hey you need five speakers and that was Lexicon and they were real high end so we started doing that and then Laserdisc that was before so DVD cool. we had Laserdisc oh you gotta have Laserdisc yeah, at Tower Tower Records they had Laserdisc yeah Laserdisc before that was it was the uh, the VCR then you had to have the, the Hi-Fi VCR the Hi-Fi VCR was that was it. If you didn't have the Hi-Fi VCR, then you, you were nothing. Home theater, yeah. It's like not having a microwave. <laughs> in fact, some of the guys were putting the uh, Hi-Fi VCRs in their cars oh, because no of the sound quality, because it sounded so good. Because all we had was cassette tapes. Right. Uh, and then uh, CD came out, and that changed everything for audio and the laser disc for video. And, and then it just progressed from there. We, we, we got into Dolby Digital Surround, and right in that area is when. Uh, DVD was invented, and that was about 1995, uh, right in there. And then DVD changed everything. And then you had this, you know, at that time it was an incredible picture, uh, right. but the sound yeah. was really good. I sound look back was... and it's like, that was good picture, but no, that was that was nice. You had to have the the S video cable to, oh, yes. to get the best sound. That's before HDMI or anything. 
and so yeah, it progressed even more as we went along and then uh, it got better and better and the high definition DVD turned into Blu-ray and now we're at 4k 4k you want to touch on 4k a little bit 4k what is 4k that's a uh, it, sure. it's an acronym that they hey Joe Mar, how you doing <laughs> he was my last guest. It was yeah. A so 4K is basically uh, double 1080p. Okay. You know, that that's they come up with the 4K line. So uh, I guess you could say that. Okay. And so they said, "Hey, 4 4K sounds good." And and get ready because 8K is <laughs> being pushed in the system that I, I I'm I'm not looking forward to because. I just want to get 4K working. A lot of people are just starting to get 4K, and now they're going to continue. They're already coming out with 8K. Wow, sounds uh, like Apple. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know that's the way it is. But there's no 8K material, and we hardly have 4K material. Uh, a good 1080P looks awesome, and uh, 4K is a little bit better. But the reason why we even went 4K, Sony said, uh, "Hey, we got these you know nice projectors, and and we're starting to see flaws on the picture when you do a, a big old screen." Mm. So they said, "If we had 4K, we could make that pixel really small." And then you'll have this fantastic picture. So that's that's where it got started. So do you th are are movie theaters using 4K? Or they uh, most there? most of your movie theaters are all 4K, okay. and some of them are actually using 8K, uh, wow. because when you're using a screen like that, th then you do, and you're blowing it up. You know, whatever that giant screen is. I mean, you, you need that resolution. So yes. uh, before we were using film, but now a lot of the theaters are uh, digital digital based. So uh, the picture, and they just started. I don't know, six, seven years ago, doing digital theater. They had it here in Stockton, like a DLP theater. Oh, yes, and, the uh, DLP. Yeah, DLP, Digital Light Processing. That was Texas Instruments' uh, big screen solution for a uh, projection screen. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. A lot of, lot of hidden facts. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a lot of facts that we hear all this stuff. And what is that? What is, what is 4K? What is DLP? What is all these things and then you got new surround sound you went from the you know, dolby surround to uh dolby pro logic to dolby digital to true dolby hd now and uh, the latest thing this guy's an encyclopedia of <laughs> knowledge if you haven't noticed <laughs> yeah all the things uh my wife goes how do you remember all yeah, these i'm blown away right and, now and all these things and models and hook, I just, I just it's what I do, you know. It's mm -hmm. it's it's just like an electrician or a plumber or anybody else. They they know their stuff, and you got to know your craft. Yeah, you you've been doing it. I've been doing it for uh, over thirty years, so uh, you, you got a few years in there, and you get to see all those changes. So, uh, you know, so you got the four K, and then the latest thing in, in the surround sound is Atmos. So we'll be hearing Dolby Atmos. What is Dolby Atmos? Uh, Dolby Atmos is uh, Dolby taking it to another level. And uh, you, know, you started out with, you had you know, two speakers for your, your sound system. Mm -hmm. And you said, okay, we'll do the, the four speakers front and rear, and then we'll do the five speakers, and then let's put a subwoofer in. Subwoofer and then they're like side speakers and uh, surround back speakers. And so now what Dolby did is said, we need to create more of a, a real life sound. How do we do that? Well, <laughs> more speakers. More speakers, you need more speakers. <laughs> So what they did is they said, well, we need to get the directivity of when you're in a room, like you're outside, that you have sounds coming from everywhere. So you got sounds coming from uh, the sky and mm -hmm. from the left and right of you and the front of you and the back of you. So they said, well, okay, here's what we need to do. We need to put three speakers in the front that are about your level and then uh, two speakers to the side of you at your level, two speakers behind you at your level, and then you can do either two or four above. So now you've got a complete sound field all the way around so you. So it's like 10 or 12 speed. How many, how many subwoofers you need? Well, uh, you, one is required, two is, is the best, and uh, four if you want to just say, hey, I just want Sh the Shake best. the nails uh, out of your house? Yeah. But most time we're doing one to two, and, and, and that usually takes care of it. Uh, we only do two more. definitely makes a difference. It, it, it does. Sub makes it. it a good sub can, can really add... The experience uh, a bad sub uh, and you'll see that in the lower end subs you know, that's a 12 inch and whatever but it, it makes more bass than what's there so when noise. you want a good sub we sell jail audio subs and, and a lot of people heard of jail audio in the car audio business but uh, jail makes some incredible subwoofers for the home that's what i have at my house 
and it is just it, it'll blow you away the sound and you pay for it in the usa made i mean there's not many stuff made in the usa true, so i love true. that you know made in the usa uh they're awesome company and uh, very quality product from eight inch to uh up to they make a super duper sub that is i think it's i don't know like 18 20 they call it the earthquake <laughs> yeah i mean it, it's, it's real life and and for audio too for music uh and the little ones start at 800 so it's not ridiculous but the little eight subwoofer so that i have is we well, have Belladine. Belladine and, and Belladine is... was also u.s and it was made in san jose and and it was really good and Belladine kind of got out of the business and uh, uh the owner you know he that was his thing that, that's what he did and, and now he's developed the uh the driverless car technology he's been working on that technology oh, wow. so subwoofers has taken the back seat and that's been in the front seat so i i, I just continued Belladine there they didn't care really about it. they still i think they still make them but right. they're really not interested in being in the, the subwoofer business like hey well we got the business so anybody that wants them you can Here buy them go. online but uh, they're not like they used to be true so, yeah and so uh other than home theater we were talking about home automation what home automation what is home automation so we we changed from you know you're, you're in your home and and you got your tv and and then we all remember back in the day, at least some of us, you know, you, you wanted to change the volume on the TV or the channel. You, <laughs> you have your kid up, go you know? do it. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I did. You know, as a kid, my dad say, change the channel, turn the volume up, turn the volume down. And then we had remotes come out, you know, in this like later 70s, you know, remotes. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of kids grew up with remotes. And so then we got into, well, like uh, remotes, like you got all kinds of remotes. So now you've got your, your TV, then you got your DVD player, you got your, you know, cable satellite box, uh, you know, all these different remotes. Game system. So we got into one remote, and that's kind of what started is, okay, one remote. So that was, you might want to say, the beginning of automation. And some companies, hey, it'd be cool if we could do the lights. So they got into doing the lights. And now it's changed into home automation for people today is, uh, you know, people heard of the ring and, and the other things, oh, the, yes, the, yeah. the doorbells and stuff. And that's really good because somebody walks up to your door and they don't even have to ring the bell, and, and you're getting a, an alert going, hey, you know, some, Amazon's here door. dropping a package off. Especially if you have small kids or home from school. It's, yeah, you know, that's, yeah, yeah you my can kids watch are... and see what's going on, and I don't one a open the door. Ago. So it was nice to be able to, like, answer the door for my kids so they couldn't have to. So They don't have I, to, it was an and adult. they don't know if you're home. Yeah. And, and it's pretty cool because you could answer the door and say, hey, I can't make it the door. I could be on the beach in Hawaii any. sipping a Mai Tai. That's right, <laughs> you can so uh, the Ring's your basic one, most popular, wireless. I, I try not to use the Ring, even though it's very popular and nice. There's a lot of issues with it when it comes to Wi-Fi because it's relying upon Wi-Fi. Mm. So you'll get dropouts, and, and I just found that uh, I'm not going to use it because people come to me, I'm a professional, and, and I want to make sure it works because they hire me and say, hey, I, I want to hire you to do it right. And, and, yeah, you pay for it. I, I'm not the cheapest guy in town. And a lot of people know that, but I mean, you're paying for 30 years experience and, right. and what's going on. And by golly, you want it done right. So we use other companies. Uh, Doorbird is one that we use a lot and uh, it's made in Germany, a very high quality product for custom homes. And they make some basic units too. I think they start about 350, so they're not really expensive, but they decided too, they were gonna go uh, total hardwire. So you hardwire it and you make sure you Cat got five. it. To the yeah, Cat5 to there, and, and that's the best way. And they have a new technology where you have an existing doorbell where it's just a two-wire, mm. and they'll have a converter that will convert that to the Cat5, and we just started getting those in, and oh, that's, that's really cool. cool. That yeah. is pretty cool. Yeah, and it does. Because there's a lot of those old doors. You, yeah, can't, you can't get you can't a get Cat5. There. Five. Yeah, yeah, a brick or so you know, no two-story. Yeah, there's yeah, just yeah. no way. So this is a neat technology that allows us to get that that data internet to that door station so that sucker works you want that thing to work i might have to upgrade because my i know my, you're gonna need to my my ring is kind of hit and miss so the control four you know we're going on this control four saw this and, and i didn't really mention about control four but they're the the uh integration company we use for home automation for the uh controlling everything on one remote uh, your your smartphone your tablet just makes it all simple. You listen to music. You want to do lighting. You want to do your. Uh, I have my garage door, uh, you your front your, door, uh, your door locks. Door you, locks. You, door locks. I have customers who have their pool equipment, um, uh, irrigation. Up and down. 
What's that? Your shades up and down? Shades up and down, automatically come up and down for you when you're not home to keep your house cool. So that's what automation is basically about, is taking care of things, uh, kind of like we had automation uh, for our sprinkler systems that automatically turn on and mm-hmm. off. Well, this is just one app yeah. and one device that controls your whole entire home. So it, it, it and it's very cost effective. You can get a control force system for 600 bucks. You get the remote and the brain that you could just expand from there, from there and add more rooms, add more things, add lighting. Uh, they connect up, they have their own thermostat, but you can buy like a Nest or something and it'll communicate to Nest and a lot of other stuff. Can you your connect home. it to uh, Google or uh, what well, is the Amazon You thing? know, Google is kind of late in the game. But, uh, Amazon, <laughs> okay, Google, turn my lights on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I I have a lot of customers that like Alexa and it, it is, it, it is a, an incredible product for the amount of money. So everything we do integrates with Alexa. Okay. It's very popular, and we'll see more and more integration of Alexa as far as you. I have a system that, hey, Alexa, turn the speakers on and turn the volume up. Listen to Pandora. I want to listen to, you know, whatever, you know, listen to Boston music or whatever you want. And it just plays it right there. You walk in the room and just do it. Wow. That no remote. Cool. Yeah, order some milk. <laughs> <laughs> Buy the cereal. <laughs> And we'll see more and more of that automation coming in play. They call it Internet of Things. You'll be hearing that, uh, Internet of Things. And what that is is they're expanding the Internet uh, to where as much as they can put on there. So there may be like a tag on your milk, that little tag, and you put your milk in the fridge, and the fridge says, hey, I got a fresh you know, gallon Anything. of milk. And then when it gets low, you may get an alert and say, hey, you're, you're getting low on milk, or you may be that – They'll automatically drop off milk like the milkman used to do. Oh, wow. Uh, but he'll, you'll know that you need milk and not just, hey, I haven't been home and I got milk here. It's boiled. You'll know that it's time for milk and, hey, or eggs wow, or whatever it is. That, my, uh, uh, my friend has a Samsung TV, or not a TV, a refrigerator yeah. with a camera in there. So if he forgets, he's at the store and like, oh, do I have milk or do I need eggs? He could go onto his phone, pull up the app, and look inside his refrigerator and see. Yeah get a snapshot of what he has in there so that, uh, that'll you know come towards self-generate and if you go to the store hey what do i need and and, you oh, know, and, and that's the thing with automation our lives are very busy and that's what our smartphones so you'll never do. forget the sugar <laughs> yeah <laughs> you always gotta have sugar yeah. Uh, yeah pancake batters waffles yeah that's uh that's crazy yeah, this, is it this scary? Is... Are you? Because um, I was you know, watching it, this it... Uh, podcast on Elon. E, Elon Musk was saying AI is is, is kind of scaring him. It, it's scaring me because uh, we have to be careful what this does for us. Don't 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 you don't want it to do too much for you. Uh, mm-hmm. You want to be able to control this uh, because otherwise, I mean, AI takes over. What do we need? Uh, need us? What for? do we need I mean, humans for? What was that uh, movie with uh, Will Smith? Where uh, oh, I robot. Yeah, and there's a few others out there, and it's like that. You know what? What, what good are we for mm-hmm. if uh, they take over? We start making these robots, and those be coming pretty soon. And they, I guess they already got that in the uh, in the adult industry. That you know, <laughs> hey, I got a my own family now, you know? channel. <laughs> the wife you always dreamed of. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's real good until you're like, dang, I don't have any conversation. You know, and, and that's where you got to look at. You know everything in life, and I think we're going through that now. It's like, who are we? What we're are we? Going through a renaissance, I would say, of some sort. What's that? Or like a renaissance of technology, or, or yeah, like, yeah, we are, we? and I think we're going through the renaissance of technology, and then the renaissance of of who we are as a nation and individuals. Because you know, being in America, we're on the forefront of technology and social. And I think it's uh, time for people to define their social status of who they are, what they are, and what life's about versus what uh, technology or politicians mm. decide who we are. That we kind of know who we are. I think that people are lost in that, and, that, and we can get lost in technology. And uh, we, we got to let the technology work kids, for us. A lot of kids like they get lost in technology. They're staring at their tablets. They do. But I tell you something. Uh, it related to this, and you know, it's staying in topic, but. Uh, one thing that's incredible is the, uh, the the turntable, the records, the records. Can you automate that? Uh, not, I, I guess you you, you probably kind of can, but records is in touch with the the old world, and, and the kids of today 
are going absolutely bonkers over the records. I mean, you just can't believe you get this kind of sound quality out of this piece of plastic. It's, really? it's absolutely <laughs> incredible. So <laughs> Their mind is blown, huh? Their mind they're, completely they're, they blown. They have this iPod, which gives you this digitized sound. Yeah. And then and you have a, a piece of plastic, an LP, and it has this warm sound to it. Yeah. And, and the thing is, they've never heard true analog sound. They're always listening to it through a digital device, which alters the sound. And when you hear true sound, like if you go and you listen to a band and, and it sounds really good and you, you know, all the instruments and then you listen to it on your, your mobile device or something, man, it didn't sound like the band. Yeah, right. And, uh, it's kind of tinny in a way. Yeah. So they listen to the record and they're like, they're blowing away. Wow. So game stores now are selling records really because the kids are wanting records oh. and my son he bought a record and i go well, what'd you buy a record for he goes i don't know i thought it was cool so i i got him a turntable and he's all happy and he's like hey i like this and he goes hey dad uh, 1200 or what <laughs> well almost and, and and so i got him this turntable and he's like hey dad uh you know it's really cool but you know it just uh, it just plays and it's over and he goes is there any way i could play more and i go you know back in the day they used to make one that stacks, you know, five or six <laughs> records, right. you know, stack them up. Really? I'd like to have that. All right, let me get on eBay. So I got eBay. I found a really nice Techniques turntable, and he loves it. He goes, man, this is so great. I can do that. You could repeat the record and play the same record over and over or, you know, stack up and, wow. and listen to him. And, and he's just incredible. He plays guitar and stuff, and that's why he heard is it just got that natural sound. And, and it's, it's hard got to get full that. full-body sound. But, you know, going back to the old world, I mean, here it is. I mean, that's the oldest format that we have is is records. Right. You know, that's, that's back, you know, at the beginning right there. Right. That's how we started. 1900s? When did the records come out? Yeah. Uh, it was, uh, I, th I believe it was in the 1800s. Uh, I don't have the exact date. Uh, Interesting. Thomas Edison it had the cylinder one. Right. And, and then, I, I don't remember the gentleman's name, but he made the, the disc one. With and the, big and horn. the disc got popular. The RCA, the, with the horn and yeah, the Yeah, exactly. You had the speaker on. There was no electronics. You, you wound it up, and the needle went on the record and vibrated this diaphragm, and that diaphragm was uh, like a, a horn, a PA horn, that amplified that sound. Wow. And there's where it, there's where it all started right there. It was it was the old wind up and, and music in your home. That was like. I guess you could say the home theater because <laughs> the that's, day. you know, they were listening to, you know, maybe a, 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 a musical or something like that, mm -hmm. that, you know, there's no visual, but you got the audio of the musical that you maybe went to the theater and saw. And then radio so hit. I, I never thought of that, but I guess that was the beginning of home theater was <laughs> with the old record wow. player. So that's pretty cool. Putting some, putting some history together right I now. know. Yeah. Yeah. You put it together and, and here we are back at turntables again. So yeah, record sales are higher down. <sighs> Than they've been ever, even in the in the '60s and the '70s. Really? Yeah. And Sony announced uh, that they're going to be building records, uh, making records after 35 years of not making records. Holy cow! Yeah. That is crazy. It is crazy. They were uh, probably one of the top producers of records. They Anybody were. knows how to build or put a record. Together? Yeah, I mean they went Sony. crazy. I mean we all had records. I mean. Uh, Man, records, I, I, I remember going in this guy's garage. He had like walls of records. He's like, these are going to be worth money someday. I'm like, yeah, right. Yeah. Quit well, guess I what? Know. I got rid of almost all my records, and it's a good thing I gave them to my sister. And just uh, last week, she goes, you know, I was going through my stuff. I still have those records. Do you want them? I'm like, yeah, I want my records. Because <laughs> I've been buying records now. And, oh, wow. And I go out and buy them. I just bought one last night. And, Do you buy them on uh, eBay? or where uh, you I buy them all up. They have, you know, Rasputin here, and then Best Buy's got a nice selection. In fact, Best Buy wasn't selling records. Then they started selling records, and they weren't really selling, so they discontinued them. And this was years ago, like five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. But the last couple of years, like, hey, we're, we're missing out. So you go in there, they got some nice selection of records. It's just a real thick, minor quality record, and they sound fantastic. So Rasputin so. must be killing it right now. Uh, they're doing very well, yeah. <laughs> he weathered the storm. He did, <laughs> he yeah. He weathered the storm. Yeah, and if Tower Records, if uh, Solomon was still here, he'd probably get back in it and say, hey, you know, we'll start selling records. That's wild. That, that is, is so crazy. Yeah. Like, Who would have thought that records would be? Yeah, so uh, here we are with the, the super-duper technology and records that we're putting in people's homes Analog. Yeah. You're doing a lot of record players in people's homes? Uh, we're starting to do more and more. People are asking for it. Before, it was just every once in a while. And I come across some customers like, 
you know, I got my turntable still. Can we hook it back up? And I haven't listened to records, and, and they want to listen to records now. Uh, and they kept it. Well, that's, that's pretty, pretty cool. Wild. Yeah. Hey, Cindy, how's it going? Um, so do you see, foresee somebody coming out with a a turntable where you can actually have a remote hooked up to it instead of having to walk over there and click it? Or is it... Um, I, you know, you think I think we're going to start seeing probably place? more of that because there'll be guys saying, Hey, uh, I'm going to try to make it to where it works with my smartphone and stuff like that. So, uh, a typical turntable had, uh, a special connection, but now you can buy turntables that have USB connections. <laughs> oh, wow. So it's digital coming out, but it, it has good sound. It's high. Yeah. They call it high res sound. So the new term used to be, you know, stereo and then stereo, uh, hi-fi and uh now it's called high res so you'll see that's high resolution you'll you'll see that little symbol high res wow so yeah. where do you foresee um uh, home theater going in the future like as far as tvs and well uh, tvs are going to be getting bigger thinner higher quality we went from plasma to uh lcd and obviously plasma was was just an incredible picture and we sold nothing but plasmas that's what's behind us right i here. knew these were plasmas when they came in and they're a fantastic picture uh but they have their faults uh, put out a lot of heat that's for sure a lot of heat a lot of energy uh had the, the most natural looking best picture all angles uh, brightness problems and lcd came out and lcd had a fluorescent bulb behind it uh then when led came out it was still lcd but it had led lights behind it mm. uh, and then we went to uh uh, the newer technology is OLED, so we'll be seeing OLED. A lot a of lot smartphones more. are OLED, right? Uh, not a lot of them, but okay. there are some that are that are OLED. And uh, it's funny because uh, I got my OLED, and I told my wife, "Is that yeah? I got an organic TV." <laughs> what do you mean organic <laughs> TV? It's just organic. <laughs> yeah, I went to uh, Costco, and they have that LG OLED screen. It is amazing. The picture was just the like picture is amazing. Yeah, viewing angles. Uh, the biggest thing with OLED is the the, the true black, and okay. that's what you really couldn't get out of, of plasma or LCD, and even LED to, for the most part. But it can do an absolute black, absolute, and then do a nice bright scene. So it, it the blacks OLED, is, the blacks are what make up a good yeah it just to have picture. that contrast because you can't see the different levels. So if somebody's wearing a black jacket with uh, a dark gray shirt uh, sometimes it's hard to distinguish you know the yeah, black okay. from the gray uh, or a shadow scene where somebody's walking in the shadows but you can't see them because it, it, it can't do the detail i see uh, yeah. so and that then stars sense. that was another thing that they showed us to demonstrate when you see a star field that uh, you can't really see stars it it can't show that so and when you say they show us you they're talking about like a demos, you know, okay. when they said, hey, you know, hey, look at this TV, and this is what you see, and you see the star field, and you go, wow, I could see all the stars in that one, that one. I only see the brightest ones. I remember I was at Disneyland years ago. We had went, and uh, they have that um, center. Yeah. And they had a regular TV and an HD TV, and wow, what a, what difference. a difference. Yeah. They're like, that's the future. Like, it is. It I took mean, 10 years for it to get. Disneyland had it 10 years before everybody else did. Uh, yeah, and the technology's kind of been around. So you look at regular TV, and, and regular TV is uh, is a system they developed, and it was 330 lines of resolution, of horizontal resolution. That's why uh, when you take a picture of a TV, you see, you see those, those lines. lines. Yeah, and the old you watch old movies and stuff of TVs, and you'll see those lines. So 330 lines, and that was if it was done right. Uh, that was top of the line. But most time we were seeing about 200 to 180 is our typical resolution oh, wow and you had like fuzz you know you had the fuzz and and you don't have that with digital so analog was sometimes it was good sometimes it was and it changed from channel to channel even if you had cable tv it's still sometimes cable was even worse the antenna was still the best back then right uh, so it went from 330 to 480 when we went to dvd so 480 you're like whoa, whoa that's, that's that's an amazing incredible. picture yeah that's that's good I and then dvd directed. jumped to progressive so it was 480p uh, so 480i is 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 480 lines horizontal, and 480p is is uh, lines as well, and then they went 720p, and that's 720p is what they're considering HD. That's the beginning of HD, and then you have 1080i, and 720p 
1080i, I don't think you can really tell the difference. 1080i right. is, is interlaced horizontal lines, 1080, and 720 is it's 720 by 1260. So now we're at 4K, which is, uh, <laughs> yeah. 1080 times uh, 2. 2160p <laughs> is what they call that. So you have 1080p and 2160p. I'll just call it 1082.0. Yeah, 1082.0, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 4K, 8K, 16K, it's just going to be, and I think a lot of it's marketing. So they, they uh, if, if I have 4K, 8K must be better. Well, yeah, it's better, but yeah, what are you going uh, to see on that? I mean, there's, there's <laughs> everything, nothing to see. Like every pore, every skin. Everything. Flaw. So uh, Netflix, uh, YouTube, and um, Amazon, uh, Vudu, and um, some other ones are all putting out 4K. DirecTV's got a couple channels. Uh, cable, I don't think they have. Uh, Xfinity has, has 4K yet. It's coming. And then the next generation, I think next year, they're going to start broadcasting on antenna 4K. Oh, wow. So you'll be able to just put up an antenna. And if you want the best picture, uh, it's funny how we go back. We talk about going back because, you know, we started with antennas. Uh -huh. And then we got cable TV and we threw out the antenna. And then we started getting satellite and like, well, they don't have regular channels. You got to get the antenna. You remember those <laughs> yeah, days? You got to put the antenna up. You want the locals? <laughs> and then uh, satellite says, no, we got the locals now. And it's okay, fuck the antenna. To and that's that's another thing the to talk about. TV. Is the cable box is going away. The satellite box is going away. Uh, everything is internet. internet and Wi-Fi so who's our good internet provider here in town who do you recommend? well here in town it's uh, Xfinity for the most part um, in, in almost all cases the Comcast Xfinity is going to be the most reliable highest speed best price and then I have clients uh, that they have fiber optic there and that is the incredible Wow instant that is incredible upload and download that's what it blew me away when I did it the upload and download speeds were equal. So when we did a speed test, uh, wow. his download was 200, his upload was 200, and there was no hesitation. It just, boom, instantly My son would meter. like that when he's playing Fortnite. He's like, it's lagging. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and for a gamer, upload's very important. Yes. But for most of us, it's just download. And that's mainly what uh, Xfinity concentrates on is the download. So you oh. have download speeds, uh, yeah. you, you know, 100 to you 500 to, the, to the a upload, gigabit. So it's community. You know where you're moving through the game like you need it to be where because that's what he's like yeah you're communicating and working uh -huh. with other people that so upload speeds on comcast is typically anywhere from 6 to 12. yeah that's where on like fiber 12. optic i mean you're looking at 100 to 200 upload speeds so if you're gaming you're you're in the game you're that you're, gamers yeah <laughs> you need fiber tell your parents to get you fiber <laughs> yeah you got to move to the neighborhood you got to move we got to go over yeah. here they got fiber uh, uh, but that'll be happening more and more as we move along because they know that that fiber is the way to go um, when you're using copper wire you start losing you got to have boosters and different things mm -hmm. and with fiber you do have to boost up after so long but it's an easy boost and you don't really lose a lot um, and it's uh, not susceptible to electrical interference that we oh wow so uh, fiber and we're starting to do fiber optic uh, hdmi now in no way. Nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and we can do long runs. Before you couldn't really do a very long. Yeah, twelve feet. feet. That's it. Yeah, now we can go hundreds of feet with fiber optic, in the home, <clears> and it's <throat> it's very thin and easy to run and pretty cost effective. It used to be you know thousands of dollars, but now for you know hundred or two you can. To run hundred foot optic, HDMI, HDMI is pretty expensive, huh? Yeah, and that that's that's the challenge with 4K is, uh, and people want to get 4K is the uh the receiver the, the 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 dvd player you know the tv the cables everything has to be 4k certified oh, wow. otherwise you don't really get 4k <laughs> you might get two and a half k <laughs> yeah and so a lot of guys so uh, what we're doing for people is we're doing um, apple tv 4k which is really good and roku uh, which is a video streamer like apple tv and some people say Apple TV. I didn't know they made a TV. Right. No, it's it's a little black box that plugs into your TV. And Apple decided to call it Apple TV. They were going to make TVs, and they said, "Ah, we're going to get in the TV business." So Apple TV's little little black box, you know, a couple hundred bucks, plugs in your TV. You can shoot uh, videos and pictures from your phone to your TV. 
and uh, a lot of the newer TVs will work. So for do they, does it work for Android? Does it? I was just gonna say. So uh, we sell Sony TVs, and Sony TV does have the uh, built-in Android compatible, so you can you know do video and, and pictures from okay. your Android and your laptop too. So if you got a newer laptop uh, or a tablet, you can send over the picture to your TV wirelessly. Uh, to your TV and check things out, and that'd be so like. So Apple computer. TV is only for Apple products. Apple's for Apple. We all know that. That you know, Apple doesn't care about anybody else. They, <laughs> but they want you to buy. You know, That's why MacBook I hate you, Apple people. <laughs> Apple, Apple. And, you know, I have an iPhone, but I I do use Windows and 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 uh, my I have Sony TV, but I do have Apple TV. I think Apple makes a good, simple, reliable phone. But the droids are good. My son's got a droid. Yeah, I'm I know a droid you do. Guy. A lot of people have them, and they're good. They're good. I, I just blown away. I, if you would ask me twenty years ago, hey Rich, what's going to be like, you know, with Apple and and and, and you would say buy stuff. <laughs> I'd say hey, uh, uh, it, you know, and by year twenty whatever, that all computers will talk to each other, and we wouldn't have to worry about you know Apple or or, or Windows that they would all talk. But here we are, and, I, still, and, and, and we go back to they're the, still segregated <laughs> <laughs> to the uh, uh, you know. What's the, up, Jamie? How you doing? Uh, the AI is the frustrating thing with me with technology is that sometimes it's for the company and not for us. And, and that's disturbing because the technology should be for us. You know, when we used right. to build technology, it was for simple, reliable, and it always worked. And we always, I mean, just think back in the day when we had TVs, we didn't have to break the manual out to figure out how to work the TV. You turned it on. You turned your channel. <laughs> right. It was simple. Now you need to ask your kids how to work this. But stuff. now, I mean, look what they made it, and and that's disturbing because technology, if it is this AI and simple, it should should be simple. So speaking of AI, and you touched on it, I don't, you weren't very, you didn't elaborate too much. Um, Alexa versus Google. Alexa's got the jump. And Apple was late in the game, uh, or uh, uh, Google was late in the game. Um, and I, 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 I spewed out the Apple because Apple's got their, their version too, Siri. Okay. And so you've got Siri, and you've got Alexa, and then you've got, and, and I say Alexa, Alexa, and everybody says Alexa. Or something else and whatever. But uh, it, definitely Amazon's got the start uh, on this AI technology. Mm. I mean, they've, they've been out for, I think, three years, maybe more. Wow. And they've got the jump. And the price is ridiculous. You can't beat the price, especially on those, uh, those prime, little, prime holidays, those man. Those prime That's holidays, like, man. little dot, and you get a four-pack or something like that. Yeah, um, yeah it, 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 they've, got, they've got the market. So uh, all, almost, almost all our companies now have, have, have got devices that link to the Alexa. Now there may be some that are going to be coming out with the Google Home and and Apple, but uh, Apple doesn't like to play with nobody. to say you buy our stuff. That's all we want. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it's having a hard time because they don't make TVs, they don't make receivers, they just make you know computers and phones and mm -hmm. the Apple TV. Uh, but yeah, Alexa's got got the market. The, the and I shouldn't say that word. I try not to say. Alexa, I usually <laughs> say, you know, Every, uh, everybody's watching this is their phone. Yeah, Alexa everything's going, going crazy. But I usually say, you know, you know, Amazon or, uh, you know, uh, Dot <clears throat> or something else so that it doesn't trigger uh, anything. I'll be at a customer's home and we'll say it and, you know, it'll wake up and ask <laughs> oh, us really? for something. <laughs> Different things. Can I get you something to drink, sir? Yes. <laughs> and, you know, that technology, you're talking about the AI. I mean, what's going to be the next step is, is going to be something that will go get you the drink or something. I mean, and that's where we have to watch it, how much technology we're going to get to. Mm -hmm. What, uh, when somebody's looking for a TV, what advice would you uh, give well, them? Well, yeah, I mean, Happy the best Wednesday. TVs on the market, I, I think, are Sony, and that's because they, they know what they're doing. And, and we use Sony maybe not just because the best picture, but it's the way they make a TV. It's, it's all the things they know about making TVs. They're old. Now, Samsung and LG are Korean companies, and they're fantastic companies. They make a fantastic product, and we do use Samsung and LG. Uh, but sometimes they're missing a connection or missing the way the TV works. And for us, we want the TV to work for people and work right. they got to be able to communicate. It's got to communicate and communicate well. So Sony's been on the forefront automation business to make sure that these things work 
in, in the home. For you. The... For me and for the user. Right. And sometimes Samsung is just interested in the numbers and just producing a, a bazillion TVs and LG as well. So like the, the, we mentioned the OLED. So the Sony OLED is actually a uh, LG panel. That they go, well, that's just an LG TV. Well, it's the LG panel. It's got Sony guts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like the, but, like uh, that. Got, yeah, it's, everything's like Sony is electronic. So all the processing and everything is all Sony. Uh, so right. that's why we use the Sony. I, I like the picture of the Sony. I think the biggest difference between Sony and Samsung or LG is the motion technology that Sony has got to, has a natural look. I don't know how many times I've done a Samsung for people and they go, why does it look like a bad soap opera or why does it look like it's out of a video camera? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I, the only thing I can come up with is that I think the processing power It's processing power, but I think that they, they like their TV like that, you know, that they make it like that. Mm. And to them, that is what they want. And, That's a good um, picture and, and I think the Koreans, they like that picture. That's high quality to them. Hey, Sam, how are you doing? And it's, it's no offense to anybody. It's just that's the way they make it. Right. And Sony is is Sony Pictures, so they want it to look like film. They want it to look as natural and real as possible. So that's what you'll see when you see a Sony that's their versus branding. somebody else. Their brand is a good quality picture. Very quality. And Sony's always been knowing that. And you pay. You know, so Sony is not the cheapest TV. Just like, you know, we're not the cheapest people. So if somebody spends three or four grand on a TV... What's the life expectancy of a TV nowadays? Because you know, when we were growing up, your parents oh, bought yeah. a TV. The they TV's spent... 20 years, you know, yeah. 15, 20, 30 well, years. Sure TVs still Some of them are still working today. Yeah. Grandma still got the old, you know, yeah. Zenith TV <laughs> that's still working. But that was the day when things were built to last. You know, we made things built to last. Our refrigerators, our washers, our dryers, everything. Not only just built to last, but we made it to, to replace a part, you know, 10 cent part, dollar part. Right. But nowadays, uh, we're finding out, you know, you buy a new washer, dryer, refrigerator, or whatever, and, and a part goes out. They're like, well, dude, you might as well just buy a new refrigerator yeah. because... $200 more, gonna, you get a yeah, brand new one. the part's one. 200 and it's $800 for labor to pull it out and tear it all apart. And, you know, just buy a new one. Right. And and that also goes back to uh, 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 Japanese and Korean. They, don't, they, they cycle their electronics very quickly and their cars. So... Uh, we saw that the, the Japanese recycle their cars after you know a year or two. Oh, really? Yeah, so and like, we like we like our, our cars for years. You know, some people yeah. still got their original car from 20, 30, 40 years ago. Um, so it's a different way, and and I think that that swing is going to go back to that that quality and everything. But answering your question about how long is our life, anywhere from the day you bought it to five years later, on average, three to five years that you're going to get out of electronics now. They, they don't want to make it to last forever, not trying they, to. The other issue, like, I ran in with my TV is it didn't communicate with my receiver any longer. So we had to do a workaround because... Yeah, because you have the old TVs had component video or composite video that's not compatible with the new stuff today. So you have HDMI. Then you have the older HDMI. It doesn't work with the new HDMI, <laughs> which makes it even worse when you go to 4K. Well, I can't get a picture because it, it was uh, some anti piracy thing so i had to put a, fi uh, a, a sp splitter in between yeah so it would well block that. it's called hdcp and hdcp is uh it's a protocol that the uh movie industry made to protect the video content so that people aren't copying their stuff mm. well obviously I, I believe all the pirates have got over that anyway so it's just a way for us to charge more money for their stuff and make it more complicated for right. a normal user and that's where we get most of our issues is the HDCP compliant. Um, so you have HDCP and HDMI, and you have an HDMI revision. So HDCP is 2.0 right now, and the uh, a HDMI is at, uh, I think it's at 2.2 right now. Wow. Um, and that, that makes a difference. And originally, uh, HDMI started at 1.0, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4. 1.4 was here for a long time, but when we, we jumped up to to 4K is when we went to uh, 2.0. And now they got the new ones coming out, uh, which is going to be the 8K and, and stuff that's right. going to be more. It's crazy. Crazy stuff. So what advice would you have for for my audience if they were thinking about buying a TV or home audio system? Obviously call you because... Yeah, you know, yeah I mean, it, when but, you want it done right. And it, some people call and they're like, geez, you know, I... 
I saw Best Buy and I can get a whole system for 1500 bucks and you just said it was three grand or five grand or 10 grand or 20 grand or whatever. And that's because, you know, I, I, I'm putting it together and, and I know what to do and, and what products to use and, and they would do that too. So if I said, Hey, it's going to be 10 grand. I'm like, Oh man, Rich is out of his mind. I'm not spending 10 grand. I was thinking like 1200. Right. You know, I saw this whole thing. And so they go to Best Buy and, and this is, this is a fact. They go in the Best Buy and they're thinking 1200 and they walk out spending more than what I planned for them, them because they realized that they didn't want that cheap TV. And that surround sound system was awful after they hear it. And then they end up upselling all the way across and then they end up spending more. Then they, then they throw install. on the extra package like you could buy a car or something. Uh, yeah, you got the warranty package, we need the HDMI cables, the monster cable, the surge protector, all these things and you're like standing there, you know, what do I do, what do I do? And, and you're like, yeah, go ahead and put it on there and you walk out going, oh man, what did I do? And you just did it. Where I'm putting it all together for you and I know it may seem expensive, but guess what? You've got an incredible system that incredible works. Incredible system. I've, yeah. And I've, then you say, hey, hey, Rich, I got a problem. And, and, and most time we could take care of it remotely. I can connect into the system through my laptop or my pad. 24 hour. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yes, it seems like, you know. 24 yeah. hour customer service. Yeah. No, yeah, you, for my, our, our supreme customers, <laughs> we have customer service plans that we do try to give you, you know, a good 24 hour support as much as we can. Mm. Uh, but yeah, we could fix things remotely and, and get it all going and make it real easy instead of you getting home and going, oh man, what, what do I want to do? And one remote. That's one remote. the beauty. I had one. a customer call yesterday and said, hey, I got a problem with my receiver. I bought it at Best Buy. I tried calling Best Buy, but I couldn't get a hold of anybody. <laughs> so they <laughs> call us. <laughs> and we try to be nice and everything. I mean, we're not making anything on it. And we hope that Take maybe it back. come back to us. <laughs> Take it back. Yeah, but then we get that stuff. And that's what we try to do is and a lot of our customers recognize that. And uh, my oldest customer um, I've had for, uh, I think it's been 30 years. Wow. Since I worked at Jack Hanna, and he stuck with me all the way through. And he's getting older now, and we just put up, he had a plasma. And we put up the new LED TV, and he's just blowing away. Wow. So we have many customers we've had for, you know, 10, 15 years. So we always say, you know, we're either the first or the last place that you'll ever want to go to a person that you want to deal with because we're going to take care of it. So uh, our motto is do it right the first time. And, and when you do it right the first time, it it, it lasts. Does, it, it lasts, and it, and it costs more, but at least you know that it's done right. The and, best thing uh, I can say is I have one remote that does everything, and I just hit the button, and it turns on. And Yeah. It, You've got it, Control 4, and Control 4 makes it simple. When you just want to operate TV, simple. Mm -hmm. And uh, But if you want to go more, Control 4 is all into the home automation. So you can say, hey, I don't want to get all that stuff, but hey, can, can you do the lights for me? Yeah, yeah, we do the lights. So I had one client say, hey, we just did a big theater for him. He goes, when I, when I hit pause, can you have the lights turn on? So uh, now he has it where he hits pause, lights turn on. And then when he hits play, the lights go down. So a lot of automation like that that you can do and cool. whatever. And, and work with Alexa. So you can say, Alexa, turn the lights on and We're gonna turn the temperature down, show. Alexa, whatever. <laughs> so if people wanted to find out more about you and what you do and how you could help them, What's the best way? Um, well, you can visit our website, uh, proavhometheater.com, and we got a lot of great stuff on there you could see. Uh, we're located at 4049 Cherokee Road. That's in Stockton, uh, just uh, east of Highway 99, just past Waterloo Road there. Uh, so we got a nice showroom there set up to where you could see it. We got the Dolby Atmos surround sound, and, and we didn't touch on it, but some of the latest things that people are doing are sound bars. Sound bars is a simple solution where you don't have to run wires, and you just plug it in, and you've got this incredible sound with usually a wireless subwoofer, and, and you got it. You don't have to run any wires or anything. Just put it you know, under your TV or something like that, and you're set. And you can integrate in and do whole house wireless music speakers with this sound bar. So it, it, it's pretty cool. But yeah, you can check out our showroom. You have a showroom? Got a nice showroom there. You need an appointment to go in there? Um, you know, it's best because I'm not always there. I could be on a job site or something. Usually there is somebody there, nine to five. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, we have, uh, she doesn't know that much, Desiree. She's been working in the office. You know right. her, my sister. And she knows a lot, but um, when it the comes technical. to technical, you know, you, you want to call and say, hey, you know, I want to come in. Rich going to be there. And then I meet with you and we can show you some of this automation, doorbell stuff, and, okay. 
and lighting and thermostat and I'll show you how simple it's got touchscreen on the wall that looks the same as your phone app and you can get it all under control and real cool. simple awesome I have people that are like in their 80s operating this people I'm not like <laughs> you Rich. I can't figure this stuff out and I'm like you know what yeah. You could figure this out. It's a it touch of so a button. Easy. It's a touch I mean, of a button. Uh, how simple can your remote yeah. be? You want to say you hit watch, select, and that's it. Yeah. And there's an off button. Off. You're done. Boom. You're done. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you for stopping by. Well, thanks for inviting uh, me. Appreciate ladies and gentlemen, it. Pro AV Home Theater. Check them out. And remember, for all your real estate needs, yes, you can. With Lance, we can. Take care. Have a great day. Awesome. <laughs>